I want to bring up the second speaker very shortly. Um, he's a friend, he's a brother, um, and then he's a certified, say, mm -hmm, multi cloud infrastructure and DevOps specialist with over nine years of experience in different facets of IT, ranging from network engineering, software engineering, deployment, system operations, IT security, and big data, to mention a few. So while he's a Microsoft certified professional, he's an IT service manager, member of ISACA Microtech Consultants. He's also the founder of Cloud Adventure, an informative platform for cloud practitioners to leverage on expertise experience using the cloud. Uh, while he's responsible for architecting and optimizing Carbon's cloud infrastructure to deliver 247i availability. He's also responsible for ensuring continuous conformity to all applicable IT standards and regulatory compliance. He's responsible for the infrastructure and software engineering deployment automation to meet the agile demands of the business by implementing continuous delivery. Someone say continuous delivery. Continuous delivery. So that's something he's talking about today. So put your hands together with me as I bring up Wale Olaleye of Carbon. Like I said, I'm shy. I like to hide here. Yes. Uh, is it afternoon? Uh, yes. Okay, good afternoon, everyone. Um, I feel blessed to be here. I don't know about you uh, because, and um, I, I think I would like to say I'm grateful to God because. Um, for the past three days, I've been down with malaria. Yeah. And, uh, but I wouldn't miss this opportunity for anything. I'm still on drugs, so. Uh -huh. I, not. I intentionally use that word so that you guys will get. I know QA people, you take every keyword. Yes. <laughs> yes. You, you people used to show me paper on the job, so. It's all love. <laughs> it's all love. It's not love. Okay, um, so uh, it's it's an honor to be here. Uh, I'm meeting a lot of guys for the first time, a lot of wonderful ladies for the first time. I hope to connect with everyone. And um, the the theme of this conference actually meant a lot to me because I'm an advocate of um, equality, inclusion, and also um, a a transparent playing ground when it comes to technology. I don't like a situation whereby um, a unit is made to feel more important than any other unit. Um, at Carbon, they know me a lot. I speak out whenever I need to speak out uh, concerning this matter. So when I saw this team saying um, quality is a collective responsibility, I, I felt, uh, wow, I felt so good about it. And I said, I would like to jump on this. Um, so today, um, what I'll be talking more, um, I would have loved to do a live hands-on. So what I did yesterday was I quickly did some videos um, that covered what I did from start to finish. It's on my YouTube page. So at the end of uh, this talk, you can go online, check the video out. It's very informative. You will learn a lot from it. So uh, what do I want to talk about is... So I want to talk about testing uh, within the CI/CD pipeline. If you're familiar with CI/CD, just signify. I, I need to know my audience. Okay. <laughs> So I, I, I don't get this. Why are you guys smiling? <laughs> what? 
It's, it's still it's, it's still all good. It's all good. All right, nice. So I'm not speaking to newbie. It's, it's encouraging to know when you, you're talking to people that are not um, novice to what you're talking about. It makes my job simpler. But I'll, I'll try to um, go through this as if I'm talking to um, someone that is not tech savvy. So it will make sense. All right. I need help. This stuff is not sliding. Thank you. This talks up or no? So. <laughs> Let's not talk about me. That guy has said a lot about me. Um, I feel he hyped me anyway. <laughs> so what to expect? Hey, hi, Chimzo. <laughs> now I feel at home. I can see faces that I'm familiar with. Um, I will touch on, I'll quickly talk about carbon. Um, that's where I work. I'll talk about CICD, of course, then how we can adopt testing um, within a CICD pipeline, then I'll also do a demo. Um, so about carbon, uh, this is what we're trying to do. We're trying to improve the way people assess finance in this country, not only in this country, um, across Africa, then way beyond. So currently we have about 1.5 million uh, app downloads on Google Play Store. Uh, we're currently launching IOS. Uh, we have interesting stuff that we're working on. So um, our rating is not that bad. We have like 4.3 rating on Google Play Store. Me, it shows that we're doing something right. And um, we we have wide range of financial products. One of which is um, Payvest. Payvest well, is actually one of the best investment returns that you can get online. <laughs> better than you can get in any bank, I'm sure of it. Uh, how much? Just go online. I want you to go online. You have to sell me. Okay. I want you to go online. So um, how, how do we give finance in, in OneFi by carbon? Um, we, use, we leverage on data a lot. Then we leverage on technology. She talked about Haja. Um, is one of our approach. Um, we can do up to 10 releases a day um, without complaining, without breaking each other's back or breaking each other's neck. Um, so all, we do all this just because we want to serve our customer well. Um, we work 24 hours. Um, we deliver service 24 hours, seven days a week, but I get to sleep. So you wonder how we get to do that. Um, and it's because we adopt agile methodologies and also DevOps um, approach. So our approach, like I said, we use DevOps to accelerate the way we deliver software. Um, so if you ask what's DevOps, it's just a principle, really. Um, for me, I don't believe, um, my belief doesn't really count because, of course, any, everybody is entitled to their own opinion. I don't believe DevOps should be a, tight, a job title. I, it's a principle, it's an approach. You adopt a lot of um, philosophies, tools, in order to ensure that there's equal particip participation between teams, uh, multiple teams working on a project. So we have developers and um, IT operations engineer coming together to collaborate, to produce something meaningful, uh, and that's how we've been winning all this work. So let's jump straight at it. Sorry, I have to drink a lot of water. Yeah. <laughs> nice one. So, first one, um, I'll, let me give you a brief overview of what CICD is. Um, CICD, Continuous Integration and Continuous Delivery. Um, it's a software 
um, philo uh, de uh, delivery approach that in involves a synergy between continuously integrating how you commit code changes and then um, how you deliver those um, code changes in form of releases. So there are two parts of it, which is the CI and the, I'll, I'll keep it for short going forward, CI and CD. Um, the CI stands for continuous integration. And what that means, we all, we all use Git a lot, right? Um, when you have a set of developers coming together to commit to one repo, what they are doing is essentially integration. They are doing continuous integration. And like what she said, she talked about Agile. Uh, but I still know there are some uh, traditional companies in Nigeria or even outside Nigeria where they, they don't use Git repo. They don't use Git repo. So you, you cannot preach um, speed of innovation to all those kind of companies. And these are companies that they batch releases to months. Before they release a change to the app, you have to wait. They wait several months, batch all those releases together. So, but if you are in an environment where you you want to move faster, you want to fail fast, learn fast, then also serve your customer faster, you use continuous integration. So, uh, the the CD part of it is where concerns most of you guys. So I, will, I wouldn't say most of it, it concerns all of us. Um, is, is the part where we build and we test. So when you commit your code to the repo, um, your testers and maybe software developers, even still, don't have to wait until they get the feedback from you um, that you've committed code before they do it, their own test. Immediately your code gets to the repo, they can automate their build and immediately get the feedback if that code that you committed is working or not. So essentially that's the concept of CI CD. So let's jump um, into common tools that many organizations use for CI CD. They use Git, Jenkins, Spinnaker, Saku CI. Uh, for, for me personally, I love using what AWS called code developer tools. The set of tools in, including code commits, um, co uh, code build, um, also they have uh, code star. Code star, with code star, you can do the entire uh, CI CD pipeline in just one stop box. So there's also code pipeline which you can use to orchestrate from end to end your CI and your CD lifecycle. So, um, other tools that um, I don't know if you're familiar with any other tools aside from GitHub. Uh, many companies use Bitbucket. Um, there's Code Commit by AWS. There's Google Cloud Repository by Google as well. I know as well have one. I'm not a big fan of, uh, of what they have. So now, like I described, um, you can have you can have like. 20 developers working on a project and they commit all their changes to one singular repository. You wonder how, how are they doing it? How are they coordinating those commits? Because one developer can commit like 20 times a day. In fact, one of the best practice is that you commit your change in, uh, in little quantity rather than committing in volume. Um, if your commit size is getting to like 30 MB, um, at times your commit may fail. So if you're a developer in-house and you're working, you make a change towards a goal that you're trying to achieve, you immediately commit to the repo. Then also, you can collaborate with multiple de developers as well. Um, then the guy that is ready to test don't have to wait for all those developers to finish what they are doing. You can do everything um, in real time. So this is what CICD empowers you to do. So what's the goal of CI? It helps you to find bugs quickly, improves uh, software quality, 
it reduces time it takes to validate and release new software updates. So a, a, a developer pushes a code, immediately you can test that code. So you, like I said, you don't have to wait for, for almost forever or for, for them to um, do all that they do. You just imagine an environment where they don't use a CI, where they don't commit to repo. All they do is they'll just commit to a server, maybe a file storage. Then the tester or whoever needs to take up the next task, he has to wait until all the developer finish what they do. But with CI, you do that in real time and it helps you to release your software faster. Um, CD, CD. Now, there's always a mix between what continuous delivery means and what continuous deployment means. They're actually two different things. Um, continuous delivery tells you that, okay, we've committed code, we've tested the code, or we've built the code. That means we're ready to push to production. Um, if you adopt this kind of work lifestyle or this kind of uh, software principle, you can, it, 30 developers can commit to a CI repo and you do your test almost immediately. Such that if business says, can we go live? You're ready to go live because you've immediately done your testing. So that's what um, CI CD, uh, CD does. Um, it's different from deployment. Deployment is now when you actually deploy into production or you actually deploy into a staging environment where another set of testing also continues because um, you guys know better that several types of testing, um, but with CD, you could automate almost all your tests in just one life cycle. So, CD also have its goals, which is similar to C CI. Uh, it helps you to automate software releases almost as quick as possible. It improves code quality. Um, it improves developer uh, productivity. Your, de your developer don't have to um, bother about um, all the nitty gritty into uh, what, for what goes into delivery software. You handle that part for them, so they just focus on code. You get the best out of your developers. So you also de deliver updates faster. So this is how a common CI/CD pipeline looks like. The first stage is your source. Um, your source is where, where your code sits, right? Is where your code sits. The next stage is your build. Um, let me give further explanation into what build means. Like, um, if you have a node package, if you have a web package, that you use Node to build, um, you know you have to build those Node packages. So with build, this is exactly the phase where you do that part. The next phase is test. Of course, you have to test what has been built already. Then you move into your deployment phase. So um, for, for many organizations that follow principles, what, they, what they've done is that they've been able to they market the environment, they have staging environment, they have production environment. I would actually advise that you do same as well. It's best practice um, such that you, you, you see how it plays out before you actually go into production. Between those two stages, you can also introduce another stage which is called manual approval. Um, if everybody is fine with what goes on on staging, then you can actually push to your production environment. So how, how does this CI CD full stack plays out on AWS? Um, for the purpose of this talk, I've limited my uh, demonstration to AWS. So um, that's why I made this reference, although I, could, I also talked about what you could do elsewhere. Um, for the source stage, you can use code commits or you use GitHub. Let's say you're trying a, uh, a, a personal project you can use GitHub as well, it's free, there's a free account. And for the code build, AWS have a service called code build. Um, you build with this tool, you also test with this tool. We'll be doing a demo using code build to test. Then um, for the deploy, um, you use code deploy. You can also use Chef and Puppet. Um, for IT operations engineers that automate a lot, they use Chef and Puppet. Uh, so now let, let's jump into the testing phase. So this is um, code build in action. Um, if you use code build, 
you don't have to set up servers. You have had a case whereby QAs in my office walked up to me and say, uh, uh, we need a bunch of servers to be able to do testing. And uh, what, what I said was, oh, it pays to use managed services over on managed services. Then you don't have to bother about the infrastructure. Um, guys can sleep, anybody can sleep, uh, reducing that operational overhead. So CodeBuild gives you that opportunity. It's, the alternative to CodeBuild is Jenkins. Um, you can have your Jenkins installed on server, then use it to, to do your test operation. But like I said, I, I preach that people use managed service over unmanaged. Then it leverages on Docker images that can be reproduced. The, um, it's secure. You don't have to. Um, the previous speaker talked about security. Um, security is also a responsibility of everyone. So, CodeBuild gives you that secure platform where you can test your code securely. Um, the build and test instructions, like I said, you can use CodeBuild to do two things to test and to build. So, developers or IT operations engineers, they use it to do. Um, building a lot. While you are software testers, you can use it to test. Um, so the build file is called buildspec.yaml. It sits in, your, in the root directory of your code that you commit to, um, to your repo. So how does it work? You, you really don't need to be the one that will author what the, what the content of the file looks like. But I don't know if your automation skill is solid, you can actually author it yourself. But you can collaborate with other engineers or other IT operations personnel and come up with come up with a, a solid file that achieve all the testing purpose you want to achieve. So it's a great tool. You can go between five to eight hours, can do all kinds of testing that you want it to do, load testing, um, functional testing, user acceptance testing, and all that. So uh, let's look at the sample code build file. Uh, this is not clear enough, right? But I, I hope you guys can make sense out of it. So it's a YAML file, and it's basic. There are a lot of templates online. And the, the first instruction, if you look at this, it has three faces. Like this um, sample file, it has four faces. Um, the install phase, pre-build, build, and the post-build. The build is where you actually do your tests. It's where you pass your testing instruction. So what I said, it was, what I did in this example is that, okay, so there's a web page that we need to deploy. We need to deploy a web application. And what I'm doing is, within that app, I expect to see a particular keyword. And what's that keyword? Conference. So I'm grabbing a file called index. When that file is committed to a server or committed to a repo, I need to grab that, that file and look for the word conference. So what this file does is when the build operation kickstarts and jumps to the build phase, which is the testing phase, if the file doesn't see the word conference, what it does is it fails. So you, you can expand this and make it a little bit um, much more complex to do whatever you want it to do. So, but this is just a sample demonstration, so I kept it basic. So in this demo, um, the demo is available on YouTube, but so that we can all have a feel of what it's, it's like. What I did was, I came up with this architecture, and we have just uh, about five components to deploy. The first one is code commits, where you store your code. Um, so you have a set of developers that are collaborating with one singular repository. Once the code gets to this code commit, it automatically begins the testing phase. So code build is where you use to test whatever has been committed. Then also, if the test succeeds, it passes on to the next stage, which is code deploy. Code deploy now deploys to your server. Is either it deploys to your staging environment or it deploys to your production environment. Now, um, this is individual steps. You can have it manually like this. Uh, but another thing is you can now use code pipeline to orchestrate the entire workflow. So your pipeline uses a, a bucket to store the artifacts. Artifacts are like 
the output generated from this action is stored in this bucket. Then this guy goes back to that bucket, takes the status, con continue with the next phase, then goes to code blue, then deploys to your server. So this way, uh, this is a, a perfect example of a CI/CD pipeline. Where, uh, and what CI/CD does is, you don't have to manually be building each time, be building each time. You don't have to manually be testing. Just write your script once and everyone is fine. So what you can do is you can also do continuous improvement. Uh, maybe there's a new feature um, from product guys and uh, the new feature causes a new change in the code. Then also as a tester, you may need to change your test script and add it here. So I, I, I would like to paint two scenarios. Um, this first scenario is, a, is an architecture where there's no code build. That means there's no testing. Um, don't defend your company. Or I know we're all guilty of it. There are some cases where we don't care about testing, where they just build, write the code, and the developer will tell you, I am sure, and they push to production uh, or push to staging. So but we should all adopt a, a best practice standard where we don't push anything to any environment without testing. So, but what, what happens, what usually happens where you don't have a testing in your CI CD pipeline? You, you have a bunch of hungry developers um, because they write the code, we will test when we go live. This is what they are even telling you. They want to push, they want to go live first before they now actually test. Uh, but code build helps you to improve. <laughs> so code, what code build does is it helps you to, to change that feeling, that face. It changes the face to that you have happy people. Um, and also, if you look at there's a younger, there's a nice guy over there feeling cool. Is I, I want to symbolize the guy as the IT operations guy that automated this entire build. Now, he's also happy as well because everyone is happy. Now, what changed? It's just one single action that changed. He introduced additional stage, which is the build and test phase. Now, uh, as the code gets committed to code commits, it signifies that it's ready for testing. Your code, your code build goes back into this guy, check the file, test it. Once it's green, it passes on the test to code deploy, then it deploys the staging. So after, you can also repeat that same action, you deploy to production, then your code pipeline does everything for you. Um, so uh, this, this two snippets is an example of a test I did. If you look at the, if you go back to the previous build spec file, um, the build spec file was grabbing for a file called conference in the web page. Right, it was grouping for a file called conference. So what I did was that I removed conference from the web page. There was no keyword called conference. Now, when it got to the um, build phase, which is the testing phase, um, command did not exit successfully. So grep conference index exit status one. That means it failed. So you get this error code. Your code won't pass, right? But so I also altered it and added conference back into it. So you get this, this pass um, status. So I think using code build helps, helps everyone in the, in the team. You can also, don't get me wrong, you can use other build tools, you can use other third party tools to add this stage into your CI CD pipeline. Um, this is the result of the two CI CD pipeline. Um, the first one just has source and deploy. There's no testing phase in it. So, but the developer was lucky. The code gets passed successfully because it, it passed all expectations fine. Um, the next phase didn't take um, anything for granted. What it did was it just added another state to improve the life cycle of the software release which is the testing phase. Um, if, if there's a sudden change in the, pipe, in the code, uh, let's say you have a new developer that comes in and destroy the code, with this, this guy will not be able to detect 
um, the changes, um, the error in the code, because there's no testing phase, but the other pipeline will be able to do that. Um, can, can I play? Uh, so thank you, but I would like to play the video. The video is just one minute, then um, This is where we deploy infrastructure and basically we use the information. The infrastructure is basically we use cloud commits, code build, and um, code pipeline. This is what the pipeline looks like. So, two expectations we did one that has code build for testing information. A series of videos I just did on integrating testing within a CI/CD pipeline on AWS. Um, so we cooked a lot of stuff in order to get this done. This is what we deployed using AWS. Um, the infrastructure basically we use cloud formation. Um, this is what they we have code commits, code build, and. Uh, pipeline this is what the pipeline looks like so two expectations we did one that has code build for testing the result was an happy MB, a happy happy developer um, another one is a hungry developer that doesn't have the opportunity to test his code uh, before going live so um, I hope you do watch this series of the video this is the web page this is what production did. Summary of uh, uh, a series. This one production. Summary of. Okay, so I would like to end here. This this was the web page that I was testing with. Um, what what I did. This was the word the keyword I was prepared for. Conference. So if if you change the source code and remove conference, the, your code will not deploy successfully. But what it will do is it will retain the previous version. The previous version will not be altered. So if you go through the series of tutorial, you will see version the current version number that you're working with. So thank you for listening. doesn't call doesn't answer all the available forms of testing that you guys do so if you go back to the theme of this conference is um, quality is a collective responsibility right so as an as a DevOps engineer that is trying to implement a software delivery pipeline you also has to have the consciousness of testing you also has to have a sit down with the software tester get their requirements and see how we can help them automate as much as possible. Um, for user acceptance or functional tests, we, can, we could expand it as much as we would like to and in, integrate it within that code build environment. So you can use code build, but it may not answer all the questions that you may want to have with testing. Yeah. yeah. I 
saw that you used web, 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 Okay. So um, for the build stage, right, the build stage has a lot of tools that you can introduce as your build stage to test. Um, AWS has server farm. They use it for Android mobile testing. You could add it as an alternative to the code build, right, to, to do Android testing. Um, then there's also um, third party tools that you guys use as much as you would like, you could introduce it into this pipeline and replace that code build. So, um, there's one I would have loved to try, but because of my health, is um, a Python service, right? The Python is a program, it's not you. I wasn't doing grep with that. What I was doing is I was taking an argument. If someone presses an argument, it's um, calls an API function and evaluates the argument, then delivers that result. So code build could handle that as well. But code build is not the entire answer. The, the idea is not to say code build is the only answer for all forms of testing, but it's a stage be, uh, between your source and your deploy. So you can introduce a new stage there. So luckily for, for us at Carbon, um, AWS supports other multiple third-party tools that we currently use. We just introduce it to replace that code build. Then also you could do parallel test runs. I could have code build, then in the same pipeline, I will just on a, vert, on a horizontal line, I will just introduce another third-party tool that I want to use for that kind of Android tester. Okay, thank you. One more question. Then we move the other to the panel. Does anybody have a question? Okay. I know your voice is loud. Okay, I'm not shy. <laughs> okay, you said my voice is loud enough. You can hear me, right? So, thank you very much. So, uh, my question is I don't know if you've asked it before because I was outside, so let me apologize before I ask. So I um, we thank you for the lecture. It was very clear and understanding. But you're looking for the person talking, I'm here. So um, the question is around. You said everything is on AWS. So like you know, I'm familiar with Jenkins, familiar with uh, GitHub, and the last one I was. I've not I've not heard of it before. You understand now. I understand how codes move from local to GitHub, then um, how it gets to Jenkins. And to me, I feel, I think that's where it all ends and all of that, and from there it goes to production. But now, is to me, before I felt, can we kill that sound? So, so my, my, my confusion is, how exactly is uh, AWS controlling all these things? Because to me, before I used to feel, okay, yes, all the, probably, um, how, do we, how do I say this? Like, um, the, data, the database and everything sits on uh, a cloud service, like such so that okay, it is very, it's, Everything happens in real time, so we can update, pull out, delete, and all of that using that. That was what I used to think before. So, how does this thing, how is it, this thing controlled such that if there is um, a break, like something has um, scattered now, you know, someone cooked beans, they deployed it together without saying it. How does uh, AWS control all of this? And just shed more light on. You understand what I'm trying to say, right? I will try to understand. Okay. Because it's like I'm confused myself. <laughs> okay. Um, first of all, AWS doesn't control it. It's the operations engineer or the DevOps or the software developers, or whatever, that controls the behavior. So in our environment, we have solutions architects 
that design exactly what I just drew out there. So you, you come up with a workflow based on the request 